Well, welcome everybody to another episode of Ascension with A Course in Miracles. Today will be episode 132. And it's so exciting that we've been doing this, oh my gosh, for so many years. And a couple of you, uh, Crystal, Dondra, you guys have been at this with me for since the beginning. So it's it's amazing. You probably each have been here at least 100 episodes. So I so always welcome and appreciate your, your presence here. And thank you so much for just being so wonderful and flexible. Last week, we didn't get together because... I went to Florida, had a wonderful time. One of my sweet friends here, Stacy, I was got to visit with her and some of my other um, spiritual cohorts, our little tribe that is bringing, anchoring some powerful, powerful light in Florida. And it was just a wonderful time for us to get together, all of us students of A Course in Miracles, all of us clear that we are not from this world that we are the makers of this world as Course in Miracles teaches, all of us clear that we're open to receiving guidance from beings that are beyond here. The and and it's and we know that as the course teaches, I'm not a body and beings don't have bodies. So there really are no bodies whatsoever. However, what we are tapping into is the consciousness aspects of self that are in, of a higher dimension. And when I say higher, I mean, they've expanded. Well, let me say it differently. It's not that they've expanded to more, is that they are in the allness that isness. And from that place, they communicate with those of us who have chosen to enter into the realm of forgetfulness. We have entered into the realm of making a a an attempt to separate ourselves from God. And when we pretend that we're separate from God, we kind of get lost in this third dimension and aspects of ourselves, consciousness that is still anchored in the truth serves to help us remember our way back. They're just calling us back. They're assisting those who are willing to be assisted. And for the most part, well, I'll, I'll say, yeah, for the most part, all of our connections with our guides these are soul contracts. These are things that were decided before we incarnated. But once we incarnate, that's why I say for the most part, once we incarnate and we begin to wake up and we decide that we want to wake up, if we didn't have a soul contract to connect, we can always have a free will choice to do so. So if you're listening to somebody saying they're talking to their guides or they're channeling or they're, they're connected and you go, how do I do that? because you haven't been connected to directly, that means that you are one who maybe your contract was, I might or I might not uh, wake up. But then you hear somebody and you you recognize how joyful it is, how peaceful it is. And you say, I want what she's having. You know, kind of like the line in the movie when Harry met Sally and, you know, Sally's having her salad and she's going, <gasps> And the woman next to her goes, I want what she's having. Well, this is like a spiritual orgasm. When people are in that place of connection with the divine, you cannot help but feel fucking amazing. And in that space, others feel the light. Others feel the radiance. And we are in the most tumultuous year that any of us are going to experience in this incarnation. And this is a time Unlike other incarnations, when they experienced some pretty uh, rough times, like in the time of Atlantis or Lemuria and the cont continents, uh, the, the uh, islands, whatever they were on, just went right back into the ocean and many lives were, were completed. And of course, those, those beings can reincarnate, but in the lifetime, they experience death, they experience extinction. In this lifetime, it's going to be different. Many of us have chosen to instead of the, the, the ending of humanity as a final thing, it is the ending of a dimension in humanity, the third dimension, and the start of a new dimension. We are shifting into the fourth dimension, anchoring ourselves solidly in the fourth dimension because the fourth dimension is a bridge. For those who have made a decision that we wanna operate from the fifth dimension, we needed to have while incarnated, that's that's the key. We wanted to do this while we were we still had these same physical bodies. 
So to be able to incarnate uh, or to have an experience in the fifth dimension, we have to go through the fourth. This is like grades in school, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. So we are in the process of seeing the end of the third dimension, the third density. This is the world that the ego has made where it is always service to self because it thinks it is God. So it wants to operate with what's in what's best for me. I don't care about you. Even some of the most well-intentioned people that are asleep still operate. That is their primary place of operation is from a selfish side. And of course, that part of us that is selfish, even if we think that we're nice people, is still going to activate the kind of guilt that we have to work through, that we have to experience forgiveness through. Because to move into the fourth dimension, fourth density, the bridge from the third to the fifth, that bridge is a bridge of many steps that have to be taken to release the old and anchor in the new. So many of us have been on that journey for a long time. I know several of you um, on this journey have been on it for at least five decades. So, and of course, you know, we're always on a spiritual journey because we're spirit. So we cannot not be on a spiritual journey, but consciously seeking, searching, reconnecting with the truth of who we are, where something clicked inside and we knew we've got to go that route. I've only been in it just a little bit over 20 years. I think 20, it'll be 22 years where I have been deliberately seeking to connect with my truth because what happens is inside you begin to go, who the heck am I? You know, I've been on the treadmill, chasing things, doing things. I've been checking the boxes, doing all the right things, but yet I'm not there yet. So there is that, that divine discontent that comes over us and sends us on the journey. Some of you have had to hit rock bottom and said, all right, I'm done with this. I don't want to be there anymore. And then that propels us. So we find our ways uh, back to or onto that bridge in so many different ways. It's infinite, infinite ways that we can get there. But however we get there, we know that we're committed to returning to the truth of who we are. And through these Ascension with A Course in Miracles, what we are doing here is utilizing the Course's teachings to get clear about the steps that we have to take on the bridge. And the steps on the bridge, some of them are very difficult. That's why the Course tells us all want what the Course has to offer. All want liberation. Very few will do the work. And the reason very few will do the work is because we're still early in the journey, meaning that there aren't enough of us um, that have really anchored the truth. And we are examples of what that looks like until now. Because so many of us have been on this journey for a while. Now, in the year 2024, the, the ending of the first half of, of the decade called 2020, the decade of seeing clearly, 2020 vision, we have to see clearly what's going on. We need to take the blinders off of our eyes. We need to really see what's been happening while we were asleep. And to be asleep just means you're caught up in, in stories. You're easily manipulated. You operate from thoughts from the past. You do what you've been told to do. You follow the path that others lay for you. That's what to be asleep is all about. You don't know that you are a creator. So you then go and attempt to create with other people's information, which is never going to lead to satisfaction. You know, the only reason we get depressed is because we don't express ourselves. So when we are children, we get conditioned into suppression. We begin to, through the schooling process, shut down our creativity and follow the rules and become well-behaved and take 12 years to get indoctrinated into following the rules or the orders of the boss, of the one person. So we give our power away in the form of hierarchy. So right now, what is happening is so many beings were born. We have a ton of, of young souls on this planet under the age of 30 that go, wait a second, this doesn't make any sense. But they're not necessarily wanting to conform. They are pushing against, which is a good thing because they are like that butterfly 
that is pushing against the cocoon. It started as a caterpillar, but eventually as a caterpillar dissolves and the, the wings get created, it begins to push against the cocoon because it's in the pushing that it strengthens itself until it can pop itself out of the cocoon. The children who are pushing against the cocoon of society, the norms of society are pushing against, which is why I love rebellious kids because I think they're, they're leaders. As they push, they're popping out of the illusion that they're going that they're controllable. So what is so exciting is that there's enough of us who are anchoring the light because we know the truth of who we are. We're, we're not seeking, seeking information. We are grounding the information. We know who we are and we're not afraid to show it. And we don't care. You know, you get to the point that it's it's not that you don't care as in, you know, fuck you. It's it's a recognition. I cannot care about what you think about me because if I care about what you think about me, then I cannot do what I came here to do. And if being myself bothers you, it's perfectly okay because I'm here on a mission from God. I'm not here on a mission to, to make you happy. You make yourself happy. I make myself happy. And what makes me happy, those of us who are anchoring the light, is to be who God created us to be. We are here knowing that we have power. We have incredible power that we spent a lifetime to forget that we had. The power of silence, the power of going within and getting quiet, the power of moving below the noise in our own mind, definitely below the noise in, in, the, in the world and connecting with that blank space that we talked about in class last night, that blank space that exists inside of us. And it's in that quiet space within where we meet the creative source. The creative source needs a blank canvas to express itself on. We have uh, an artist in, in our Monday night class and she was saying, oh my gosh, I, I just had an aha. When, when I look at a blank canvas, if I let myself tap into inspiration, it tells me exactly what to paint. But if I am looking at a blank canvas and I'm trying to figure out what to do and I let my ego get involved, it never works out. And that's the same thing that that Course in Miracles is attempting to help us understand. We must return to being a blank canvas. The blank canvas allows the master creator, which is God. And we all have to do the work of no longer feeling offended that we're giving our power to God. Once we create um, a loving relationship with God, once we know God is not this punishing father on a cloud somewhere, raining down fire and brimstone, once we, we do the healing work around God and we realize, well, God is just the life source. And it's not a father figure, even though it feels loving, fatherly, maternal, but it's a kind of father, mother that we haven't seen in the world because the world is fathers, mothers who think that they know better hierarchy. We got to follow their rules. We got to obey them. And then they, they indoctrinate us. They tell us what we're supposed to know. This is a father that says maternal, uh, balanced, masculine, uh, feminine energy that says, you are my child because you are my creation, but I love you so much that you have total freedom to do whatever you want. Not until I started parenting that way did I understand what real parental love was about. I used to parent, let me tell you what to do to make me look good. Let me tell you what to do so that I can check all the boxes about right parenting. So let me tell you how to fit into my idea of what a child of a good parent looks like. There was no freedom for my my firstborn in that, but my secondborn, well, he had a lot more freedom. My firstborn was not happy about that. You know, how come he gets to make his choices? I'm like, because I didn't know you could make choices until I realized I'm making a choice. So you got my choices. Now that I know I can make choices, then everybody gets to choose. So it took a while in our household to balance that out. But eventually what I began to understand is that the, the relationship that we have to create with God is a loving relationship, is one that is thrilled that God created us. And in the acceptance that God created us, and we realize that it is a God of love, it's a God of oneness, it's a creative God, then we 
recognize. So the source that creates us is really the life force that animates us. And once it, it's no longer male, female, father figure, like a human father, and it's just this benevolent life force expressing itself through all of creation, you want that life force that creates universes to guide you. You don't want your puny little ego mind that only gets you in trouble to be your guide. You gladly abdicate all power to the creative source. So Course in Miracles wants us to know that within us is a life force. If, if we think we're, we exist, it's because the life force is active. And when the life force is active and you let that life force be your guide, my gosh, it's only going to lead you to expansion. And that's where all the fun is. That's where all the joy is. That's where all the play is. That's where the, the uh, collaboration and cooperation is. The fifth dimension that we are co-creating, the new earth, whatever you want to call it, Course in Miracles calls it the happy dream, is a world where we are all listening to that source. And that source is guiding us to be the right and perfect expression on the canvas. And when each of us expresses ourselves uniquely, perfectly on that canvas, we will have the right and perfect spot on, on in, in our lives with all kinds of participants being part of it. So like in a painting, you need the flowers, you need the ground, you need the clouds, you need this or the, if you want to create a scenery that lets people see what's there, well, we need all those components, but all those components are going to come together knowing that they are doing God's will, not their own. Because when we do God's will, everything serves the greater good. When we do our own will, it's very selfish. It's, it's all about me. That's why it's contraction, because it separates itself and then thinks I'm better than or lesser than, and it has to create a whole story of victimization. As we begin to wake up and we begin to understand that this is the way the game has been set up, we realize, oh my gosh, I feel so guilty. I had all that power and I misused it. Of course, a miracle says that awareness is important so that you know which direction now you want to start moving. You want to start moving in the direction of source. You want to start moving and in, in, in let God call you back into alignment with your truth. That's all that that's supposed to do, call you back. However, it activates a guilt that we all have to work through. As we were reading, and we are in chapter 30 of The Course in Miracles, we're in the text. And in chapter 30, we are still inside of section number five, which is called The Only Purpose. And of course, we've been studying this. It takes a while to get through the Course of Miracles. We've been studying in this particular section that we have one purpose and one purpose only. And we are being gently guided through the teachings of Jesus to understand what that one purpose is. And in the very beginning of that, that section, in paragraph one, now today we're going to be focusing on, let me see, paragraph three. But the last couple of calls, we have been focusing on paragraphs one and two. So I'm going to paraphrase or, or give you just the highlights of those two. So you see how we land on paragraph three, but paragraph one, Jesus tells us that we only have one purpose and that purpose is forgiveness. The purpose of forgiveness is to recognize that through the, the, the training that we have received on planet earth, we have forgotten who we are. It's like a blanket fell on us of misinformation. A veil got pulled over us. The wool got pulled over our eyes. Whatever analogy you want to use, the bushel got put over our light and it, it darkened us. It made us feel less than. So what we are doing is recognizing that forgiveness is the only purpose when we begin to wake up. This world is giving us the opportunity to forget ourselves. This world then, for one who is waking up, gives us the opportunity to remember ourselves. So forgiveness is about recognizing that the only thing that happened is we forgot that we're the creators of our reality. That's it. Forgiveness, we're forgiving ourselves for forgetting. There's nothing else to forgive once you understand what forgiveness is really about. 
So as we continue moving along this path with the Course in Miracles, we are being given very specific steps to follow. This one is to realize that there's only one purpose, and it is the purpose of forgiveness. Because forgiveness is only valuable, according to, forgiveness according to God, is only valuable to one waking up. Forgiveness according to the world is valuable to the ego. Because it's the kind of forgiveness that says, well, I forgive you, but I won't forget. Well, that's not real forgiveness. That's the forgiveness that says, I, I know what you did to me and I'm, I'm going to let myself be okay with it, but not you. You are the one who did this to me, but I'm going to forgive you because I want to clear myself. Well, it, it never works because the ego always lies to us. There's no clearing when you say, I forgive, but won't forget the forgiveness that the course is teaching us is to realize that they didn't do anything to us. Something happened in the physical world. We don't deny that, but we deny that it has power to hurt us. We deny that whatever happened affected us because we're creating a relationship with our soul, which is eternal and it never gets affected. So that part of forgiveness that states I forgive you because you and I both forgot that we are love, loving beings. We did things to each other, but that's not who we really are. So that kind of forgiveness is I'm, I'm coming back to the side where I remember truth. If you want to meet me there, great. If you don't want to meet me there yet, because you're still playing in, in, in the quicksand and you're still playing stuck in, in the density of third dimension, that's okay. Because we're connected no matter what. We're still one no matter what because the same life force, the same God that created us pulses in all of us. And if you as God want to continue to forget and I as God want to, want to start to remember, it's okay. You go your merry way. I go my merry way. We don't get upset with people when we're at the restaurant and somebody next to us orders a salad and we order a steak. We don't get upset about that. They can order whatever they want. We don't get upset when we go to the amusement park and some people go this path to that, that uh, ride and we go down this path to that ride. We don't get upset because we are in a world of infinite possibilities. We all have choices. So we have to become mature enough to know that all choices, including the choice to stay asleep, is a valid choice. So when you recognize everybody is where they want to be, whether they want to be or not, is none of our business. Remember, we're getting to the point that what people think of us doesn't matter. Well, the opposite is equally as valid. What we think of others does not matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect them. We need to get comfortable with the idea that it doesn't pay to have opinions that are about who's right, who's wrong, what's, what's the right path, what's the wrong path. We need to get to neutral. Let everybody do their thing. One of the most profound sayings that was ever said and I don't think this, this is even attributed to anybody who is spiritual, is the saying, live and let live. Let everybody have their journey. So as we continue here and we, we recognize that there is only one purpose and that is the purpose of forgiveness, the course teaches us to do the work, do the exercises that are in the, in the book, even if you don't understand them, put them into practice. Because what begins to happen is through the repetition of the new, the new belief, the new thought, the new way of being, we are creating new neurological pathways. We're creating a familiar thought system. And as we create it, even if we don't understand it, we begin to strengthen our mind's ability to think differently. Think with the Holy Spirit, think with love. And the way of thinking with anger or with ego, with, with judgment begins to lessen as this one strengthens, just like in a seesaw. When we're in a seesaw and it's all about the ego at the top, it has more power and the Holy Spirit's at the bottom. As we begin to move on a seesaw, it moves in tandem. So as we, we stop strengthening the ego, we start strengthening our, the, the love side we begin to shift balance. We begin to little by little strengthen and we rise in frequency. We go up to a higher uh, a density dimension and the ego lowers. The ego loses power. 
So everything that we do in following these exercises is to strengthen our, our mental ability to know that we can think a thought faster and faster and faster than we could before, even though the, in the beginning we didn't understand it, but you do the work because you're learning to trust. And the development of trust happens as you do work that you don't understand. The more you do work that you don't understand and you begin to feel better, the less you want to do things that you did understand that you thought was true, but it makes you feel worse. So we're moving from feeling good for being righteous to feeling good for being peaceful. Those are very different ways of thinking because when we were in, in the feeling good by being righteous, well, if if we let other people have their way, that, that's we're being doormats. So the mind does not want to feel peace. The mind wants to stay in attack mode because, well, that's how I prove that I'm right. So there are so many things that have to be untangled from our, the, the web of beliefs in our mind. And by doing something that we don't understand over and over again, until we begin to feel it, that's how we then understand that that's what works. So there's a line here in paragraph one, the, the end of the line, and it's talking about doing forgiveness. It says, and it is recognized that all things must be first forgiven and then understood. Because when you begin to forgive and you feel such incredible peace, unlike you've never known before, the peace that passes all understanding, when it passes all understanding of the ego, you begin to understand it from a soul perspective. The next paragraph went on to tell us that um, when we are in attack mode, we lose all understanding. We lose all ability to see clearly because it's a reaction. It's a defensive posture. So we are bringing ourselves to the place that we are doing things that we don't understand, practicing them until we begin to understand it. Once you begin to understand it, you realize I don't want to do things the old way where I was attacking to be righteous. You can watch that on the news. How many people constantly attacking people on the news, especially right now in the season of, of the elections, people don't have conversations with some of these candidates. Uh, potential candidates, it is all, or I guess they are candidates, all of them are candidates, potential presidential nominees. But there is such, it's crazy. I, I don't like to watch that because they're attacking one another. Who's going to one up the other? It's not a conversation. It's not a sharing of what I'd like to do. It's an attack. You're wrong. <laughs> and it's like, how can, how can anybody get their point across when the only point is I'm right and you're wrong and everybody's doing the same thing? then who really is right? So we need to understand that we've got to forgive that that's part of the shenanigans of the ego and realize that ego attacks as a way to feel right. And when we do that, we lose all understanding. We don't remember the truth that God has placed within our hearts. So we also have to get, get clear, as it says in the very um, paragraphs, Two still, sentence six, it says the possibility of freedom has been grasped and welcomed when we begin to stop attacking, when we begin to welcome peace in our heart, when we begin to recognize guilt for what it is, when we practice forgiveness and we feel that peace, we are beginning to get why this work is so important. We are beginning to get why it is that it is necessary for each and every one of us to move into the realm of joy because, because it feels good. It feels better. It connects us to our source. It's just so powerful. And then it goes on to tell us that as we begin to feel the freedom, then we really begin to, to gain understanding of why the process is that way that it is for all of us. So then the world becomes a place of hope. I'm reading right out of the course. It becomes a place of hope because its only purpose is to be a place where hope of happiness can be fulfilled. Once we understand that earth is a playground, God that creates earth gave us a playground. When the eagle makes the world into an image of itself, it creates uh, hell, that that's all that can happen. 
because in the attacking and the posturing and the I'm, I'm right and you're wrong, in all of that, we separate from one another and we just move into the realm of density. In the density, we are contracted. We're in fear. We're in survival. It's all about me. There's no caring about anybody else. So when we begin to do the course, do the lessons, not understanding them, but following through because we're building faith, we're learning to trust the teachings and you do them and then you begin to feel better. You begin to realize, wow, this is really amazing. That is adding to the hope. Oh, well, if I can do it, so can anybody else. And if more of us do it, can you imagine what kind of a world we will have if, if everybody is operating from love instead of fear? So we are little by little moving through the trust in the work, through the following with it, having faith in that this work is leading us somewhere because we heard the call. Who am I? There, there's got to be more than just this. And we go on this bridge, on this journey to connect with the truth of who we are. We learn that God is the life force that animates us. And we realize when I'm connected to that, everything does feel better. And now you realize, well, I did it. Anybody can. And you anchor the light, you commit to being that and only that, you are now a living, walking example of what's possible. And that is why the children that have been born, there are enough of us anchoring that light that even though they're pushing against the shenanigans that they're being conditioned with, they're anchored by light that illuminates their path. They don't have to know us, but they can feel hope. They can feel, you know what? A lot of people are crazy. Maybe even their parents are nuts, but they are watching, they're reading, they're hearing other people who are operating at such a level of integrity, of honesty. There are some political candidates out there right now that are saying things that you would not have heard before. They're saying, we need to get rid of the CIA. We need to get rid of the IRS. We need to get rid of these things that are oppressive. We need to give people their voice back. We didn't hear things like that before. But now we're hearing it because there are people who have found that only when they have their voice can they feel peace, only when they're allowed to express themselves and not have government agencies who are that are oppressing people, can you really have a world where everybody has opportunity to thrive? We can't have special groups deciding who is worthy and who's not. To connect with the life force, to know what God is, is to know that all of us are created equal. So as we allow ourselves to feel that love, to feel that impulse for creativity, to feel that desire to push against a system that is too oppressive, it's like putting on a, a shirt. I just bought my little grandson when I was in Florida, a t-shirt, and it's a t-shirt for a child. It's for a toddler. It's about this big. Can, to, to live under the, the oppression of the old system is for me to try and put that t-shirt on. It would be to go and, and try to fit into something that is meant to be outgrown. So as we move and anchor our light, the light is activating the frequency of hope that is letting so many find their voice. Then they're speaking their truth. Then they're pushing up against the bigger system. You know, it's one thing to push against your parents. That's a little system. Then to push against a school, that's a medium system. But when you're pushing against a government, that's a big system. And if you feel confident that you prefer to, to honor your truth and you come to the place that, that you recognize, give me liberty or give me death. And you're okay with being in a state of, it's okay, crucify my body. I'm not my body. You have reached the level of liberation that Jesus got to because you recognize that your freedom is more important than anything. Your liberty is the most important thing, but not just for you, for all for all who want it. Now you stand up with confidence against the system, against the ego. Basically, that's the system is the ego that you can call it the matrix. It's the ego. It's the mind that operates in selfishness and separation and greed and jealousy and judgment. We all need to individually pop out of the mental matrix so we can pop out of the collective matrix that we have agreed to participate in. So as we continue here, in paragraph number three, let me tell you, this is such a beautiful paragraph because when we get that all of us can unite in hope, not one of us stands outside of the opportunity for hope because we realize that the world is created by God. The earth was created by God. 
And we don't want to be part of the world that we help participate in when our ego ran the show. We want to be part of the world that God created, the earth, the planet, with everything on it being made of the same life force. So we are one with a living being that wants to express itself as much as we want to. To get to that, you need to know what God is. You need to know God is the life force that animates the rock, animates the, the leaves, animates a human, animates a dog, animates a mountain. We've got to get comfortable that everything is pulsing with vibration because all of it is life force. Once you make that shift and you realize the oneness of everything, you can't go back. You can't go back to putting on a, a two-year-old's t-shirt and walk around like that makes sense. You, you can't. So in paragraph number three, Jesus is letting us know once we begin to experience hope, you're not yet is heaven quite remembered. You're not quite there yet for the purpose of forgiveness still remains. Forgiveness needs to do its job and it does not end until you have forgiven the entire dream. But at least we're beginning to realize that we have power that makes us feel better, that helps the world. So we're moving in that direction, but we haven't quite remembered heaven because heaven is a state of being that we want to embody so that we experience heaven on earth. Here, sentence number two says, yet everyone is certain that he will go beyond forgiveness because we know there is more after forgiveness. Our first goal is to get to forgiveness. Then everything else opens up because once you're in forgiveness, the mind is not operating in the past. The mind is not operating with egoic thoughts. The mind returns to its blank canvas. Now life force can inspire us into the new. We can't create the new while you're busy supporting the old. It's like you, you cannot build the new house while the old one is still there. Maybe you can do an addition here and there and make it a little bit more comfortable, but it's not the new house. We've got to tear down the old. It's got to be totally done with before we can move into the new. So yet everyone is certain he will go beyond forgiveness and he but remains until it is made perfect in himself. We remain in, in what appears to be the 3D world until forgiveness is made perfect within. That means that you know none of this is real. Forgiveness says, I forgot. I forgot. I am a creator imagining this world and I forgive any single delusion that tries to make anything outside of me real. That's why moving through this, this journey, as I said earlier, Course in Miracles says everybody wants freedom, but nobody wants to do the work. Very few will move to that liberation because to be free, you must let go of attachments. You cannot possibly be anchored in the 3D things and experience 5D freedom. It's not possible. Now, it doesn't mean that you gotta you give up all of the wonderful things that you have. That's not it at all. It's the attachments. It means that you recognize that if you let go of, you don't need a house because you're free. You trust that you will always have a place to be in. You don't need to have a partner to make you happy and complete you because nobody completes you. You're already complete. You don't have to have the status. You don't have to have the that specific job. You do what you desire to do, trusting that you're always cared for because you've tapped into life force. Life force guides you. You no longer do work that you're not happy in just to pay the bills because you don't operate that way anymore. You become a creator that recognizes that if you want to play the game, you play it, but you're in the world, not of it. You're in the game, not of it. So we stay in, in the 3D thinking while we still have forgiveness to be done. This is why the sages, those the beings who, who achieved highest levels of consciousness, all of them died poor. And not poor because they, they were paupers, poor because the 3D world sees that they didn't leave an inheritance to anybody. They operated by trusting life. They, they lived like the lilies in the valley. They knew that they would be rained on. They knew that the sunshine would, would shine. They operated like the birds in the air. They knew that they would be taken care of. 
that level of trust allow them to operate in the world, but not of it. So they don't have to accumulate if they're moving about in freedom, knowing that they will have housing, they'll have food. So how many of us really trust that if you let go of everything, walk out of your house and just give it away, you'll be taken care of until you can do that, until you are comfortable saying, I don't need any of this. You guys can have it. I will be taken care of. You're not fully free. So as it says in here, everyone is certain that he will go beyond forgiveness and he but remains. We will remain until it is made perfect within ourselves. Until you can walk away, you are still bound. But here's the thing. You just need to be willing to walk away. You just still, you just need to be okay knowing that you will be okay. You don't have to let go of your stuff. You have to let go thinking that it's what keeps you safe because it does not. It actually binds you. It makes you have to go to a job you don't want to go to because you got to pay the bills for the house that maybe you love the house, but you don't like the bills. That's not, that's not happiness. That's not enjoyment because we have been conditioned that this makes me happy. No, you're happy because God created you to create like itself and your happiness comes from extending that. Your happiness comes from being at peace with who you are and enjoying all that is, not just this, all that is. You've got to be free to enjoy all that is like the lilies of the valley. They don't worry about where the next rain is going to come from. They just trust it. And if death comes, death comes, the seeds got dropped and more lilies will come later. The next season, more lilies will come because you're eternal. You do not perish. You have an experience of, of what we call death experience, but it's just a taking off the costume of the three third dimension. And if you've done enough work, even if you end up transitioning now, or you know, we're all going to transition while we're in this human experience, you will leave at the level of consciousness that you're at. This is why it's so important to do the work of detachment so that no matter what happens, because it's going to happen, the death experience is going to happen. You then know you've already learned what you needed to learn in the classroom. At this level, you got your lessons. You want to come in at this level or higher. You want to come in in a world that is operating with more freedom, more consciousness, more certainty that we're all connected, that we're all one. Sentence three says, he has no wish for anything but this. One who decides that he wants total freedom has no wish but to do whatever it takes. I will remain in, in incarnations until I, like Jesus, don't need a body to come back in. That, that's my personal goal. I, and if it takes me one or two more incarnations, that's okay because I'm having fun. I'm not attached to the things of the world anymore. So this is pure fun. It's really fun going through the process of watching this body age, of watching the hair get grayer, of watching the skin get more wrinkled. I mean, it's like I'm having fun watching the changes and playing with them. Because it's like, I get every day, I get a new costume. Every day, there's another gray hair. And in places, I had no idea gray hairs were going to grow. But there they are, getting gray. So it's so much fun now being me because I'm free in this body vessel that before used to confine me and constrict me. It was a prison. Now, it's a source of just fun. It's just pl play. So God expressed as Lina is having a great time. Yes, even in this crazy snow, it's like I'm learning that I can love it. I don't have to judge it. All right. Sentence number four says, and fear has dropped away because she is united in her purpose with herself. That just touches me. And fear drops away when we recognize, excuse me. Mm, I am blessed. Fear drops away when we recognize that we are united with our purpose. Our purpose is to use the world to free ourselves. Once we fulfill our purpose and the world that bound us becomes the, the example that lets us know that we are free because we see the systems and we're not afraid of them anymore. Once we achieve that level of freedom, we have completed the purpose of using the world to hide ourselves, using the world through forgiveness to find ourselves. And when you find yourself, you realize you are just 
God expressing itself. You're just an aspect of God. You are life force taking on a, a, a shape, a, a personality to express an aspect of God, like on a painting. I don't have a painting here, but imagine that that's a painting. And the blue would look odd if it was white there or green there or yellow there. So everything finds its place on the canvas of life and it goes to where it needs to be and it's perfectly there. All of it operates in beautiful um, collaboration. So once you realize your purpose, now, now the real fun begins. The journey is, is fun once you realize what's happening. In the beginning, it's painful as hell. But before the journey, you're operating in delusion. That's painful to be that, that totally, completely asleep. Then the journey, the bridge, Painful, painful, easier, easier, easier. And then all of a sudden you pop on the other side. My God, this is fun and easy. <laughs> this is fun and easy. You just wake up and do what brings you joy. You wake up and do the thing that you're doing, whether you're going to a job or, or not, but you're doing it because, well, this is what I want to do. You don't do anything out of obligation because you're not beholden to the outer world. You're doing what comes from within you, what you are inspired to do. Sentence five says, there is a hope of happiness in her. I'm changing it from him to her because I'm reading it. In her so sure and constant that she can barely stay and wait a little longer with her feet still touching earth. I want to stay a little longer, but really I cannot wait to be totally, completely unbound from a physical vessel being with Jesus and all the beings that are out there that visit me, that that I connect with, that I commune with, because I'm just connecting with myself in, in the dimension of freedom. And that consciousness that appears to be beyond is just me tapping into the life force that I am that is greater than this little tiny little bit of myself that I'm letting uh, be expressed as Lina. So yeah, I'm just here because there's a few more fun things I want to experience. I want to experience being a grandmother to a second child. I want to experience possibly my other children moving into different levels of relationships and maybe even other grandchildren there. It's fun being a grandmother. I mean, it's just so much fun. I tell my kids about it. I know that it was going to be this much fun. I skipped having them because that's, that's a pain in the ass being a mother. But the grandmother part, Oh my gosh, I would have just adopted grown children and said, okay, you know, I'm going to adopt you and then pop, pop out some babies. That's what I want to do. But every bit of it has been a beautiful journey to get me to here. My nose is running. Hold on. <laughs> I didn't have this when I was in, in Florida. It seemed like everything was, was drier there, even though it's more humid. Here, everything is dry and runs like crazy. So it's it's crazy. It's a paradox. Um, but to you're content staying on this planet a little longer because you know you're shining your light. You know you're helping to plant the seeds that allow for future generations, including your next incarnation. Because see, I have gotten to the place of divine selfishness. I do everything for me because me is you. We are one. So I want a happier world. I want a free world. I want a transparent world. So I'm doing what I want. I'm doing for you what I want done for me. And in that place, I'm creating a world that if I'm going to incarnate again, I'm going to incarnate it into a world that is going to be liberated because it's going to be operating from a higher frequency, a world that is going to be up here, not down here. I mean, I'm done with that. That's boring as hell to continue in bondage and in, in, in slavery. So the next sentence is, yet is she glad to wait till every hand is joined and every heart made ready to rise and go with her. Yes, I want all of our hands joined. I want all of humanity. I'm doing this for me because I know I'm one with you and all that is. And I continue to find more joy, more peace, more connection to source, because if I can do it, so can you. And those that I have agreed before incarnation to be a beacon for, I'm going to just shine my light as bright as I can be. 
I'm not dimming for anybody else. Those contracts of dimming my light are done and complete. I tore those contracts. That's done. That part of my life is over with. I am in the part of my life, my human incarnation, where I am honoring the contracts, contracts that we created where I shine my light and help you see. Because as I shine my light and help you see, you shine your light and, and, and be part of what creates a world that will never have to go back to density, slavery, robbery, lying, cheating. All of that is, is not going to be part of the new world that we're creating because in a happy dream, we're all operating as one because we know what God is. God is us. And we gladly own that aspect of self and we live and embody it to the best of our ability. See, I stopped seeking um, truth a long time ago. Once I discovered what truth was, I just began to live it. So I was on a spiritual journey trying to get spiritual until I realized, wait a second, I'm spirit. Why am I trying to get spiritual? I just need to be what I am. And in being what I am, everything gets easier, gets funner. It's absolutely freaking amazing. And who doesn't want this? <laughs> just who doesn't want this? <laughs> Anyways, I am going to move into that higher frequency, but I'm taking all who want to go. And those who want to go have to choose to do that. But I don't judge those who don't want to because they just keep providing the contrast that helps more people see. I've been there, done that. I don't want that. I want what she's having. <laughs> and in the wanting what she's having, we all then desire to be how God created us. Beautiful, loving expressions that want to continue to expand the kingdom. We don't know what life without judgment, life without rules and regulations, life with total freedom looks like because we haven't lived that. We've had tastes and glimpses of that. But the world, the happy dream that awaits may be a few more incarnations away, but we can start creating it because we start feeling it within us now. Then we set the, the stage for coming back. And listen, a lot of people say, oh, no, I'm done. I figured it out. I'm done. If you say you're done, you can't come back here. You're not done. Because until you can come back here like Jesus did to just be the light of the world and not be attached to a body, you're not done with incarnating. But isn't it fun to know that if you're going to incarnate again, pave the way, pave the way for what you want to incarnate into. Rise to a consciousness level that you are being the light of the world, that you are being just nothing but a beacon for all, then that's the world that you're going to come back into. It's just so amazing. For thus is she made ready for the step in which is all forgiveness left behind. The importance of that line cannot be understated. We are, we are getting ready for the step that has us be able to leave third dimension where we don't need forgiveness anymore. We can leave forgiveness behind. When all of us operate knowing that we are love, we are light, we, from the moment that you're born. That's why I want to be in that incarnation. When I'm born to family that knows who I am, honors me. Like my little grandson is born into a family where they're honoring him as the, the essence of God that he is, at, which is so beautiful to see. So Children in the future generations are going to be born into families who know you're a child of God. You're here. You show me what you want to do, and I will do whatever it takes to, to feather your nest, to make sure that everything is as wonderful as it needs to be so that you have a path to lead all of us into something greater. No longer are we going to think that parents know best. We are going to always know that the ones who are born is the fresh essence of the divine. And we want them to teach us the way. We listen to them, to their ideas. We stop listening to 70, 80-year-old people who are so old and decrepit and set in their ways. That's not leadership. I mean, that, that's insanity. We are going to be led by the new ones. And to be led by the new ones, you got to get over yourself. To get over yourself means that you've done the forgiveness work. Oh, I forgive myself for thinking I was somebody. And you come to the place of acknowledging we're all, we're all divine aspects of the divine. So that concludes today's lesson. I don't know about you, but that was so moving to me.
So episode 132, we completed today. And oh my gosh, what a beautiful reminder that we don't know quite what heaven is like because we're not living in heaven yet. We're still operating in, in levels of hell. Even if it is, we're climbing out of that density. We're still not in heaven because heaven is when all beings know that we're in heaven. And not all beings know that we're in heaven because not all beings know that they're God. Not all beings are, are can use their power to co-create that. But you shine your light. You become a beacon that shows others how to, how to get there. And it just tickles me to no end. It's this one of my favorite things to do every week is, or almost every week, because obviously we didn't do it last week, is to come and share and let God take over my mouth and just say whatever wants to come out. And that is why it's a transmission. I'm just allowing, because I want to, it feels freaking amazing. God to speak through me. And I hear things that I've never heard before. And it's like, oh, I got to go back and listen to this one. Um, and it's so exciting that you guys participate. So if anybody received a nugget, if you want to share um, maybe what that was, you don't have to, but if you want to, please unmute yourself because I would love to hear if you picked up a nugget or two. Yes, Crystal, you're going to share. Wonderful. Good to you have know, you. Know, we should have, we should have a game, create a game of monopoly of heaven and hell, you know, so you have to navigate the game, you know, to find Keep on finding the right way to create heaven in the game of monopoly of heaven and hell. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Let, that's that's your new venture. Let's start that. <laughs> yeah. And we get a but, but the, get out of hell, get out of jail free card, out of hell and into heaven. There, and, there we are. But even, but even if you're in jail, then you must learn to find heaven there. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I love that. I love that. Yeah, but but, but you mentioned earlier on. Um, uh, I'm not sure how you actually put it, but feeling um, the power, the power from peace versus the power from being right, mm -hmm. you know, and um, and that that's quite a that's a, a that's a big one, you know. It's, you know it made me sit up to remind myself that how 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 that raises edges, how sharp that raises edges to to yeah. recognize that being right. Being righteously correct if you win a case or whatever it is that I was right, you know, and yeah. it feels good, but the feeling of power of peace is so much different. It is. You know? It is very different. There's a, there's, a, there's a balance. There's such a balance in it, you know. There's you know? a balance because someone doesn't have to be hurt for you to feel good. It's a win-win, yeah. It's a win-win. Yeah. All are equal. All are equal. And, and we want all to feel that peace and feel that power and feel that joy because you're one with them. This is why Jesus told us, treat others as you want to be treated. And did we listen? No. 2,000 years. We haven't been listening to that. We, we've we been treating others. One, we treat them um, to manipulate them so that we get what we want. Or two, we we treat them poorly because we don't like them. We don't want them. So it's all been so messed up. But mm. those things are almost over. That that time frame is yeah. almost complete. We're moving to a whole different dimension. When you understand astronomy, when you know that we're going through the photon belt, when you know that you're moving through a part of space where we are being, it's like going through a car wash. We are, we're going through the part of space that there is a car wash that is beaming light, helping us remove anything that wants to be removed because we want to play on the other side. We want to go, because this is a this is a spiral. We want to go to the next higher level, but those who don't want to, well, they can go to the next lower level and stay or the next same level and continue to play in 3D. But those of us who want to ascend, well, we're ready to clean up and let go of what does not belong. So anyways, these are fun conversations. Thank you for highlighting that. Yeah, the, the, the peace that we think we feel in the third dimension when we need to be right is fake peace. That's not real peace. The real peace that we feel is only comes from the awareness that we are one. And you want for all what you want for you. And only in that space is there peace really felt. And it passes all understanding because it doesn't fit in what the world teaches. So nobody can understand it. How can you be at peace and you under these circumstances? Well, I'm at peace because 
I know none of this is real. You know, you, you come to the truth and you recognize it's just, it's just particles pretending to be Lina, but it's just particles. And the, the knowingness of the truth of who you are is the particles and you just want to be a happy particle. So that's it. Now there's my new thing. I'm just a particle. I'm a happy particle. <laughs> Well, thank you all so much for joining. And anybody who watches this on YouTube or if you share it on social media, then you can go to my YouTube channel, Line Orlando, and you can find all the other episodes. They're all there, except for the ones that were censored when I was talking about those things that people you know, were shooting up in their arms. And I said some things about that and YouTube censored me. So I'm in the club of being censored for sharing facts. <laughs> Anyways, love you all so much. So next week, I'll text you all um, our link and hopefully I'll see you again. And if not next week, there's always going to be another week. Love you all. Bye-bye.